Hey guys and welcome back, but if you're new, I'm Disa, thank you for coming. Um, I just wanted to sit down and tell you guys a little bit of long distance relationship advice. Not that I'm any specialist or anything. We've just, we've been doing long distance for almost three years now and it is definitely, definitely tough. And I think because people only see the good parts like on Instagram and on YouTube, you see more like what is actually going on and what it's all about but especially if people just look at it on Instagram and stuff you only see the good um, you only see the good side because nobody wants to share a crying picture on Instagram at least I don't want to do that and have that to look back on I don't know I don't even like looking back on the sad videos on, on YouTube so I try and not do that it's not because I want to try and seem perfect it's just that I don't want to look back on those memories they're not that great but I have put down a little list um, of like long distance relationship advice. I asked you on Instagram stories yesterday and one of you suggested this video. And I've also just over time, I've always gotten questions like, can you give me some advice? Can you give me advice on how to do this or excuse me, how to do that in my long distance relationship? And it's very hard to just reply like, oh yeah, just this, you know, like, <clears throat> especially like, I don't know, we've been getting, like, we also get emails about long distance advice and I just wanted to have, or to put this video out there so that I can always recommend this video instead of having to try and reply in <clears throat> a message and it's not really possible like you, I just put bullet points down here. So this is going to be long, grab popcorn, something. Anyways. So um, let's start with the most important part in my opinion, um, and that's communication. Communication is something in all relationships, not just long distance relationships, but in all relationships, that's something that you really, really, really need to practice forever. Like there, there's never a time where you're like, okay, I don't have to communicate anymore. I mean, yeah, all couples will be like, oh, we don't have to talk, we just know. But still, if there's something that you feel like you're unsure about or there's just something weighing on you, express it, talk about it. Because it will help even though you might think like, oh, I'll just ignore it and then like, it won't matter. Um, always talk about it because otherwise it will just build up. And especially in the long distance relationships, it's not like any normal relationship where you can just buy each other flowers or you can just go to the movies or do something fun together to like make up for the fight or make up for the bad, the bad things. You always have to communicate. You ha always have to talk through it and express exactly how you feel to make sure that the other person also knows. Especially if you don't have time to FaceTime or call or anything. Uh, then this is definitely key like you have to express so so well because it's all just over text and it's so so easy to misunderstand text messages so communication is definitely my number two three one forty everything <laughs> communication always and that's always got to be my answer um, to just talk to your partner if you're feeling any certain way next thing is patience and understanding um, you are two completely different pers people, or persons, people, personas. <laughs> you're two completely different per people. Oh my god, you're two completely different people. And you probably, most likely, if you're in a long distance relationship, come from completely different cultures, completely different upbringings. Everything is just very, very different. And that's why it's very, very, very important to realize that you're going through the same thing but you handle it differently. You might be handling it like I do. Uh, I handle my struggles and everything. Like I'm very expressive. I always like tell Jackson and I'm always like very, you know, communicative about all of that. And Jackson would rather not tell me if he's feeling that kind of way because he doesn't want to bring me down. Like that's his view on it. And I definitely get that, but that always has me like have to like where I have had to ask him in the past, like, is this not hard for you? Like, are you not struggling at all? And that's when he told me, like, I am struggling a lot. I just don't want 
to bring you down or make you feel sad especially like I don't want to talk about that when you're happy and then bring you down along with me because I'm sad and I was like okay that's a very good point and that kind of made me realize like he's going through the same thing but I'm just gonna have to let him go through it in his way. He doesn't, I'm not gonna force him to go through it in my way and always tell me about it when he doesn't feel comfortable with it or he doesn't want to. So just realize that you are two completely different people and um, you will throughout your life experience and ex and uh, experience and ex ex express everything completely differently. Um, and through time you will learn how the other person expresses things and what they're feeling and you kind of are able to read into everything But that is why it's very important in a long-distance relationship to be extra communicative especially at first so that you like Get there that you will understand like okay now he's just going through something or whatever number three an end goal an end goal is something that is key <laughs> I mean everything is but an end goal will motivate you so much more to like push through this rough path patch in the distance uh, while you're going through the distance and you will be able to look forward to this is just temporary like then it actually puts it into perspective like me and Jackson are ending the distance in August and in August that's it like we're never gonna have to do that again and it feels so amazing and also just knowing that it's like this year it's happening in a couple months like it's five months left now it's not seven anymore it's only five and i'm so so excited um under that note to like count your blessings um while you're in the distance and are waiting for that end goal to happen um because there are things that you will miss in this period of time even though it seems crazy hard and you just can't deal with it especially that first bull you're getting used to it it's just it seems like the world has fallen apart when they leave and it's so so hard and my heart goes to you if you're going through that right now because it's 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 tough but you're a strong person you can do it um, but having an end goal something to look forward to is definitely definitely necessary if you're both ready to do that if one of you is very ready to do that but the other one isn't then that's also something that you're gonna have to talk out or change a couple things or or break up because that's not a situation that you want to be in one of you really wanting to end the distance and then the other one not wanting to end the distance another thing about that is that you have to realize that one of you is going to have to make a huge sacrifice at the end of the distance because one of you is going to have to move well you could just move somewhere different to each other to be together but most likely one person is going to pick up their life and move across the country or across the world like jackson is doing and that is something that you cannot take for granted because that's a huge 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 sacrifice that that person is giving you or doing for you and it's very important to realize that and understand that at the beginning of the distance that at the end of this it's going to be great but it's also going to be bittersweet for the person that is leaving their life but while you're in the, the distance like when you're going through it it's very important number four to have many adventures to look forward to like if you're going through the distance and you're thinking oh my god it's not until like two years we have to do two more years of this and then we can finally be together but in the meantime, you can have like mini adventures, like you can go see each other and you can like meet in another country or you can go explore in your country or you can do something and you can be like, okay, I have those like five days that we can go explore Paris or whatever. And then you have that to look forward to. And that's only in a couple months, you know what I mean? So you don't have to look forward to in two years, we're going to be ending the distance, but it's just in two months we're going to go on this Paris trip and it's going to be great. And that excites you so much and having those mini adventures to look back on and that brings me to another point uh take videos me and jackson do youtube so obviously we take a lot of videos but we also take a lot of videos like on our phone and especially when we were traveling through europe that made that i mean that didn't make it the trip so much more fun then but it makes it so much more fun now to have that to look back on especially when we're apart and being able to like 
when I miss him, I can go on YouTube and I can watch our old videos or I can go on my phone and watch some other videos that we have. Um, and that just makes so much of a difference because that kind of makes you forget where you're at. Jesus, camera cut me off. I don't know exactly where I was, but um, having those videos and having everything to look back on makes such, such, such a difference. How was I sitting before? This isn't as comfortable. <laughs> Um, yeah, it makes it so much, so, so, so much more fun to look back on those. I mean, pictures are alright, and it's always fun to look back on good pictures, but videos are something different, and just having videos of you cooking together or going on little adventures, it's just something that I really recommend, and it makes me really happy when we're apart to have that to look back on. Another thing that um, kind of falls under that category of making your making you feel better when you're apart is having a sweater or a t-shirt of his or hers I guess so having something of his like how we did it we used to have like a black shirt that he would wear all the day before like the entire day before he would leave and then he would sleep in it that night so it like very much smell like him and then the next night I would fall asleep wearing his t-shirt and having his smell and everything close to me makes falling asleep a lot easier. I also have like big pillows and everything and I have a heated pad so I put that up against the pillow so it's kind of like <laughs> I'm a little extra. You don't have to go that far but that's just how it works for me. I have a very hard time falling asleep but for whatever reason when Jackson is here I fall asleep instantly but when I'm alone I just I fall asleep at like 3, 4 a.m. Trying to work that out with my doctor though. Stay tuned. Anyways, so having a t-shirt that smells like the other person just, it just helps. At first it can make you very emotional all of a sudden, smell his smell, especially if you do so. I will use his um, deodorant. <laughs> Probably smells a lot, no, probably sounds a little weird, but his deodorant is just like this like soapy smell and he's always used that from since like we started dating. So he actually, after he left this summer, he left me his deodorant because I was using it throughout the summer and it worked so well. So when he left, he left it for me and I've been using it and then when I'm out or I'm somewhere doing something, I'll all of a sudden smell him and because it's just the deodorant and it smells like him because that's how, that's his deodorant. So, sometimes when you're just out and about and you just all of a sudden smell them, it's just, it's just so like, hmm, <laughs> that's my person. Um, and it makes you just feel, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> God, this wasn't supposed to be an emotional video. Um, but it's just very nice just being at some random place and then just all of a sudden smelling him. Or just, and it kind of makes you feel his presence. I know that sounds kind of weird, but smells kind of do that to you. Um, if you smell a certain smell, it makes you feel a certain feeling. And having that person's smell just all of a sudden flare up, it just makes my day at least. Hopefully it will do the same to you. Another thing that we get questions a lot about is when to talk and this one I can't really answer it for other people but I will tell you how we do it because there is five hour time difference between us and actually when I was in Thailand and Jackson was in the US it was a lot easier because then it was I think it was 10 hour time difference and then always when I was waking up he was falling asleep so we were both having that like chill time like just waking up and it was just easy morning and then he was just winding down falling asleep and vice versa when I would be falling asleep he'd be waking up so that actually was perfect for us it worked very very well and we would be able to talk twice a day every single day and it was amazing but now that we have five hours it's a lot harder because I know it's like short of time and it should be easier but it is harder because when I'm waking up it's already is it's uh, in the middle of the night his time and then when he's so I can't talk to him then obviously and then when he's waking up it's in the middle of my day so I can't talk to him then and then when it's the end of my day it's the middle of the day his time so he can't talk and then at the end of his day it's the middle of the night my time so I can't talk so it's just a lot harder to work out that time difference rather than like huge time 
time differences because then you're winding down or just getting up at the same time so it's nice but what we do is that we will talk just on the phone not necessarily facetime like while we're eating or while we're getting ready while we're going from place to place not gonna like tell you to talk on the phone and drive but like if you have like a system in your car and you can you can talk to them while you're driving from place to place and just always those little tiny bits I mean you can't talk for hours and hours when you do this but you can talk just for a little bit and Jackson is very 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 busy with school and everything because he's in school he's got a job he's the president president of a fraternity I think you already know I don't know what you're talking about that but he's just got a very tight schedule so doing it like this works for us at least um so that's definitely something that i definitely recommend if the time difference is shorter but if it's longer great i'm so jealous i wish it was like that for us but that obviously makes traveling from and to each other a lot harder so pros and cons people anyways i think that's all that i have um i think that's all the advice that i can give and I hope it you can learn something from this. This was something different. And if there's anything else, like any other advices that you have or that you do that you think is very much key to make it work in your, your relationship or your long distance relationship, uh, comment it down below because I would love to read all the other comments and then other people can read more comments and hear more of what you do and stuff like that. So I think that would be amazing. Um, Thank you so much for watching, and I hope it's not too boring when it's just me. <laughs> I can't really do anything about that right now. Um, but just know, if you are starting a long-distance relationship, or are already in a long-distance relationship, it is emotionally draining, and it's so hard, and it takes everything in you to make that work, no matter how much you love that person. It just, it's so, so hard at times, and... There are always, like in all relationships, there are always times when, well I don't know if I should say all relationships, but in long distance relationships at least, there are always times where you think, can I do this? Not because you don't love that person or anything, it's just so, so hard at the moment that you just, you don't know if you can do it. And that's okay, that's fine, that does not mean that you don't love your partner, that just means that you're human, you've got emotions and you just need to work through it express it to your partner and talk about it and if they've got your best interest at heart they will work through it with you and bring you back to being happy and being <clears throat> not that they will bring you back to being happy but they will guide you towards that direction and then you have to do the work yourself obviously but just wanted to put that out there and also if you are doing long distance in your relationship power to you Damn, damn, proud of you. That's so, so, so well done. Good luck. You got it. <laughs> All of the above, damn. Um, and also if you've like already done your distance time, like if you're already now together, I've been seeing some comments and people are like, we finally ended the distance and I'm like, oh, I could cry, I'm so happy for you. That's so amazing. I cannot wait for that to be us. But anyways, power to you love that um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you learned something from it if not comment what you want to teach us because we would like to know um, I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video <laughs> bye <laughs>